In this video, I will demonstrate step by step how to create a dynamic loading video effect with a percentage counter using After Effects. With this effect, which can also be used in infographics or tutorial videos, you will elevate your presentation skills to the next level. The initial step is to create a new composition. I go to the new composition button and set up a composition of 1920 by 1080, perhaps lasting 30 seconds. The background can be set to black. So you can modify this color later if desired. And the composition is created. Next, we will create a new solid once the composition is established. You can assign it any color. After establishing the solid layer, I go to the rectangle shape in the toolbox above, pressing and holding. The circle must be selected as we will emphasize it in our animation. With the solid layer active, I draw a perfect circle by holding down the shift key. As you can see, this solid layer we added to the background is actually part of the circle. Or, if you want to keep the solid layer in the background and create a new shape layer, here is what you need to pay attention to this time. After selecting the circle, the layer here shouldn't be selected. Click on an empty area. See, as you can see, a new shape layer has been created here. The background remains as it is. So, any gradient effect you give to the background will remain as you give it. At this point, we need to create a border. So I click on fill and select none. Since we want to create a border, I increase the stroke value. You can give it a color. I go to the outlines color and observe an eyedropper icon. I go to this icon, followed by selecting the layers color. I intend to slightly darken this hue. When viewed, a marginally deeper shade appears. The outlines color and thickness can be adjusted as needed. Make adjustments based on your visual preference. During our progression, remember that this segment will underlie the loading animation. The align panel can assist in perfectly centering this region. I align it both horizontally and vertically. To access this panel, ensure the align option in the window menu is active. Subsequently, this panel should be visible in your workspace. Now, we will fashion a white line that corresponds to a percentage value. When animated, this white line will progress from 0 to 100%. We already poses an outline. I go to shape layer 1 and press Ctrl D. This results in shape layer 2. We will then transition the color to white. But it's up to you to select the desired loading color. I click to the OK button, followed by naming our layers. Shape layer 1 is called background, shape layer 2 is called loading. So we can see which layer means what more easily. I click on the triangle icon next to loading. On the right side of contents, you will find the word at, accompanied by a triangle symbol. Clicking this triangle reveals several options, which simplify some desired actions. For instance, I choose trim pads. Upon selecting it and accessing its properties, start and end values are displayed. I adjust the end value to zero. When set to zero, the loading animation line is present but invisible. Sliding it closer to 100% illuminates the loading animation. Returning it to zero, I click on the stopwatch icon beside end, move to the fifth second and designate it as 100%. Upon doing so and playing the animation, it portrays a sequence starting from zero and reaching 100% within five seconds. If the loading line's appearance is not to your taste, I navigate to the stroke section under ellipse and modify the line cap with adjust the line's extremities to round cap. This change yields a rounded finish as opposed to an angular one. By opting for the background layer and elevating its value, say to 80, a loading line materializes within outline. However, the design's versatility allows for personal customization depending on your intentions. Consider this scenario, you are crafting a stylized infographic resume and wish to denote a skill at 75% proficiency. Adjust the trim pad's value under content to 75% for the second keyframe. The animation will progress to this point and halt. You might observe a pronounced but After Effects provides a solution to mellow this abruptness. I select both keyframes, right click and navigate to keyframe assistant easy ease. Alternatively, post keyframe selection, the F9 shortcut serves the same purpose. You will discern a smoother motion upon activation. It initiates gently and 
culminates with an equally graceful termination. Endeavor to utilize easy ease frequently to enhance your animations. The animations become significantly smoother with this approach. Now let's address the loading portion of our animation. So what about the percentage counter? I swiftly grab a text tool and inscribe zero onto the scene. Should you seek a digital SQL numeral, the DS digital font is an excellent choice. I opt for the Gotham font to achieve a more conventional appearance. I reduce the font size to 280 and center it using the Ctrl Alt Home shortcut. This action aligns the text both horizontally and vertically within the scene, courtesy of the align panel. Should the number center point deviate during your project, these direct alignment options prove invaluable. It is crucial to align the paragraph centrally to ensure that varying numeral widths remain centered. Upon centering the paragraph, the central point shifted. The solution? I press Ctrl Alt Home once more, realigning both axes. Next, we will incorporate a slider control effect into our scene. Synchronizing the numbers progression with our loading animation, I navigate to the effects panel. If you can't spot this panel, activate it by selecting the effects and presets option within the window menu. I shift the zero layer to the uppermost position and input slider into the effects search. We see the slider control here. I direct the slider control effect with the mouse over the text. See here the properties of the effect. Now I open the text properties. Under text you will see source text. I click on the stopwatch on the left of source text and press the alt key on the keyboard. The expression field opens. But we are not going to write anything in this expression field right now. When you click on this icon, look a string will be following you. A line. I drag it over the slider so that the expression will write itself. When we change this value, as you can see, the value on the scene will also change. Now, let's press the U key on the keyboard. We are going to set up the keyframe in the slider as follows. I set the slider value to 0 and click on the stopwatch icon. Above the 5th seconds, I input 75, reflecting where we left it. If you are aiming for a 100, you would input a 100%. If you drag out the timeline, say to 15 seconds, you might observe decimal numbers. Ideally, we desire only whole numbers. To resolve this, I access the period expression field by pressing the U key. The expression section is visible. There is an additional code snipped we need to append. When you select any field, the percentage symbol is affixed, rendering the value as a whole number. This adjustment prevents the earlier issue of decimal values appearing. Should the composition appear too expensive for your workspace, Hold the shift key and resize it from its corners. Alternatively, adjust the value as I demonstrated at the video's outset. When you resize, it might scale unevenly due to the fixed anchor point. Using the knowledge from the video's start, this issue can be rectified. But for simplicity's sake, you can scale it directly from the corners while holding the shift key to maintain proportions. 15 seconds feels lengthy. I reduced its duration. I initially extended the duration to showcase the decimal values. For a smoother transition, I employed the easy ease function, condensing two second keyframes to a span of 5 seconds. But let's enhance our process. It is after all an After Effects tutorial. Thought we will revisit some familiar steps, it won't be a complete redo. Our current method involves dual keyframes, slightly complicating the process. However, this remains a viable solution for certain scenarios. I delete the slider control, remove the expression code, leaving only the outline functioning. Here is a proposition. What if we link the source text value currently set to zero with the end value from the trim pads? This linkage ensures the numbers displayed corresponds with the end value. Seems logical, right? I connect the source text string to end. Consequently, if end is 0, the displayed number will be 0. If end is 75, the number shown is 75. However, this approach might still result in fractional values being displayed. To access the expression field, I press the Alt key and click on the stopwatch icon. Look, the expression field is open now. Now, we are going to take a different approach than before. I click on the arrow here. 
After clicking on the arrow, I select JavaScript Math and choose Math Round. Upon selecting, the expression here updates. You can also input this manually. When we click elsewhere, the result now shows whole numbers, eliminating fractional values. In essence, we are setting it up so that the displayed number matches the end value. By comparing, this method seems more logical than our prior approach. If I adjust the value to 100 at the second keyframe, our display will automatically update to 100. If this animation isn't to your liking, here is an alternative. I access the graph editor by clicking its icon. I then right click and choose edit speed graph. What you will see is a curve. I drag the keyframes right point to the left and its left point to the right. Observing the animation reveals a gradual start, a faster middle and it concludes at 100%. Feel free to adjust these values. For instance, shifting the start point left creates a quicker start that slows down near the end. I revert to the original view by clicking the graph editor icon once more. And there you have it. Our loading animation is complete. To align multiple animations, I select them. I right click, choose pre-compose and assign it a name. Let's call it skill ps. I click the arrow button, revealing one animation. To tempting, I refrain from duplicating this composition using Ctrl D as modifications in one will reflect in the other. For instance, if I alter one's background to gray, both animations adopt this change. To preserve individually, I delete the duplicated composition and navigate to project. I duplicate the original with Ctrl D. I rename it, perhaps to skill Adobe Illustrator. I insert this new layer and modify its feature such as changing the background color or the end value. With both animations set to different percentages, I adjust their positions to compare. The left reads 100% and right halts at 75%, achieving our intended differentiation. Beyond this, you are free to introduce any additional edits. In this tutorial, I have shown you how to create percentage animations in After Effects and make them dynamic for infographics. That's all for this video. If today's video was useful to you, don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel right now. Just click on the subscribe button below this video. Thank you for watching.